Welcome back everyone, welcome welcome back to the game development of the game which doesn't have a name but which is uh, gonna be amazing. <laughs> it's getting good, come on, come on the intro is getting good, you, you, you started to like, I'm starting to like that intro, I'm starting to like, I started to come around on that intro. Let's jump into the game and we'll talk about as per usual, talk about the changes since last time, what we're gonna do next time, yada 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 yada. So there's been a lot of changes, which you can't see, unfortunately. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So first change, or maybe start off without going into the game. So first of what I've done is that I've taken essentially everything. Every uh, mesh, that is. I've taken almost every mesh, except for the player mesh and the floor. And I've just baked everything into one big 8k texture. I didn't even need... 8k to bake everything. I need like half of an 8k texture. So there, there's more room to fit more stuff in if I want to add more things into these rooms. And I'm gonna want to add more things into the rooms because we're gonna talk about that in the end of the video. But anyways. So first of all what I did is this. This is probably not gonna be interesting. But I know. I know. Chris, why are you showing this? I just want to show this. It took, it took a long time to fix this. I want to show this to everyone. First of all, here we have an atlas texture with this humongous. You can see that half of it, there's nothing on the, the bottom half of it. So I'm only using half of this 8k texture. But this then translates to Crypt Atlas. Essentially everything in this room is one big uh, mesh now. And that's possible because before in Unity you could only have 62,000 something vertices in one mesh. Now, I don't know, now, I'm probably like three years ago, but I wasn't really in the loop. Now, what you can do is you can just change on your mesh, there's a property called mesh index or something like that. If you change that property from 16 bit to 32 bits, you can have essentially any number of vertices. I mean, I guess there's a limit for how many they can index. I don't know if it's a 4 billion vertices or something insane you can have. Uh, so that's very good, because that means that we can have bake everything into one mesh, because this mesh is gonna be quite, quite huge. We can look at the statistics tab here. If we go to the Crypt Atlas, it's 130,000 vertices and only 88,000 uh, triangles. But it all fits into one mesh, and that's pretty amazing. And that makes it so that we have less draw calls, of course. But I also changed this little thing, which... Super simple change to do, but I'm just a dingus. So I didn't know. Thanks, didn't know about how light works in video games and that there's different rendering. <laughs> well, I've heard things about this rendering path, but I didn't, I didn't really know. I didn't really investigate. Now I changed the rendering path. It was set to use graphic settings, which always selected forward. Uh, forward is. Not good. <laughs> from what I'm, from my experiments, it doesn't seem to be that amazing. It says in the uh, documentation for the forward rendering, why would you ever select forward rendering? It says that it doesn't have an overhead if you're making light applications. It doesn't have a uh, any overheads, whatever that means. And also the deferred it had one more thing going for it. Uh, Chris, do, do, you, do you remember anything in life? Uh, I, yeah, it could also, um, on your lights, I, I can show you because it's gonna be difficult to understand otherwise. On your lights, you can select what the culling mask, what the light is going to affect. If you are using the deferred render pipeline, you can only deselect four things. But you can deselect up to 32 things if you're using the other one. And I'm not using the culling mask ever on these lights, because the lights just illuminate everything. Because in most cases, that's what you want to do anyways. Um, so that's the uh, that's the, the, the only advantages with forward. But deferred is amazing, because what deferred does is that instead, when you, when you have a um, point light source in forward rendering, what it does is that essentially the more objects that this that that thing affects, every object that this affects creates another draw call or something. Something. I'm just talking out of my ass right now. <laughs> it creates more draw calls. What I'm trying to get to. It creates more uh, draw calls. 
but with the third it's per pixel um, per pixel light so only the pixels that are affected by the light are going to have to do additional work so essentially you can have any number of point lines as long as they're small right because if they affect the entire scene sure it's gonna be annoying because then you need to calculate every point light but most point lights just affect a small area which means kind of much more point lights so before i only had three point lights and even with three point lights i had something like 300 to 500 draw cards with only three to five point lights now i have something like 10 or so per room. I think there's like between 7 and 10 per room and uh, I've more than half the draw cost. If I had the same amount of lights, we can go to the scene and we can show you this. If I had the same amount of lights as I had with the, when I used forward rendering, uh, I had draw calls of about like 120 something like that. Uh, but now I can add even more lights, I have more than double the lights, triple the lights essentially, and I have half the draw calls, which is just amazing, amazing, amazing. Another optimization that I did is that the rooms that are now in Fog of War, like this room, I've disabled the lights for them. So if I open this door right now, uh, okay, there, okay, there was like one light there, <laughs> okay. That was a good example, but it enables the lights only when you can see that room. And it kind of makes sense with Fog of War for that to be the case, I feel like. If I close here, it also shuts off the lights, which makes it so that there's less draw calls. Uh, which is pretty amazing. So let's talk about, that was the uh, the backend thing. The reducing the draw calls down to, well, also, by the way, um, now it doesn't have to create additional geometry for every point like, like it did before. Uh, these triangles, I think there were something like 3.2 million, 4 million or something when I used the old forward rendering. Now it's only 1.6, which is perfect because now I can add more stuffs, more stuffs, more stuffs, more stuffs, more geometry. That's nice. So the first most striking change probably when you get to the, the visuals is that all the colors have been changed. So the walls, for instance, have everything has a new color palette and kind of more muted. So before, for instance, very easy to spot on these urns. These urns used to be like a white marble, so they very much stuck out from... Uh, you could see them from a mile away, is what I'm trying to say. And now they are more discreet and they kind of blend into the environment a little bit better. So they're a little more brownish kind of color. They're still using that marble texture, but it's very difficult to see. But uh, but they're brown instead, so that's cool. Uh, the walls are more dark, they're darker, is that what that's called in English, Chris? Yes, I know. <laughs> and what else did I change? Yeah, I changed the color of all the... Um, everything that's made of wood is now a little bit less brown. I realized that everything was so brown before, now it's, it's more neutral, more neutrally colored. So that's for the color changes. Then you can see there's a hole there in the middle there. That's what I talked about last time, that I wanted more verticality in the game. So this is the first step towards that, is going to be able to have room rooms under rooms. So now rooms can generate a room under itself, and you can then see down below it, which is kind of cool. It creates you know, that verticality thing. I still haven't worked out how I'm going to do this thing, where maybe, for instance, there's... It could be cases where like a wall is gone and then you can see down here and then maybe there's another room here and you can see down. <laughs> that's something I'm gonna work on in the future, but that's the future, that's not now. Oh yeah, 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 also this thing I said I was gonna uh, work on last time and I also did work on it. So this thing right here, a little bit difficult to see, so it's essentially there's a kind of a girl statue, she's kind of coming out from the wall and she's holding two incense burners and the incense burners they have this magical smoke thing and this smoke if you inhale it I was about to gig it, I was gig it if you inhale that smoke you will of course restore your sanity I, I, later on this is gonna work, it doesn't work now but later on if you hover over this it will say something like uh, Restore sanity, something like that, and you click on this statue, and there's only going to be like one statue per dungeon. It's not going to be in the first room like it is right now. That's just because I want to try things out. Wow, he ran for too long. Doesn't matter. Um, and then when you click on this statue, the 
fumes smoke is going to go away these incense burners are going to be turned off because now there's no incense burners anywhere else in the level there's only before they were just hanging about like, everywhere uh, now the incense burners will only be found on this statue and uh, yeah you inhale the fumes and then you restore your sanity so that's the way to restore your sanity because we talked about the sanity system last time uh, so that's how that's gonna work main oh i can show you by the way let's jump into substance paint i can show you how this looks because it's a little bit difficult to see in the game unfortunately how this looks because i spent a lot of time on this a lot of time on this statue and i even uh, did some uh, some google uh, latin so the thing is i wanted some text on the sides of this and i was like maybe i should just write some symbols or something but that doesn't really fit i think in churches Latin fits. The problem is that if someone speaks Italian or something, <laughs> they're gonna be able to read this, and that... The, the good part is you're probably not gonna be able to read this, because the text is so small in the actual game that it's almost impossible to read. But I thought it would be cool if it said this up here, so that's apparently in Latin that's morte. And uh, life is uh, vitam. Uh, probably where vitamins come from. They give life or something? And um, if you know what this says here on the side there, million dollar question. Velatus, this is just Google Translate, this might not be correct Latin. Velatus amictu ubum bratio. <laughs> Sounds so Italian, but it just suits this statue so much. Actually, the way I created this, it's actually a very low polygon mesh. It's I feel like I did a good job with this, because it doesn't look like it's super low poly. You can see if you zoom in on the hands, of course, that it's very low polygon. Uh, but nobody's gonna look that close anyways. I think it's like 1500 triangles. I don't know why, why I'm bragging about triangles. <laughs> I have no idea. Why is she holding a bowl, by the way? She's holding a bowl because... Uh, there's gonna be three versions of this lady. I call it a lady, because... It, there is a lady coming out from the board. You can see it from her shapes. Um, so there's going to be three, stat three possible versions of how this can spawn. So either it can spawn in a way where it gives you full HP. It's going to be like a red... Like, you know, in Diablo they have the same, like a pool of red something. I don't know if it's blood or if it's... Whatever it is. It's some, some red substance uh, that is the light substance. So you get light from that. And there's like a orangey kind of thing which probably might look like orange juice so i probably need some other color for it purple but what color could spirit be or maybe white white and uh, then you restore you get, can restore your spirit so you can either restore your spirit your health your spirit is your mana as i said last time i renamed it your spirit your health or your sanity can be restored at these statues uh, yeah let's jump back into unity again Let's jump back into you, and uh, let's talk about what I want to do to, for next time. So, of course, I want these statues to actually work when you click on them. They need to be uh, spawned somewhere in the uh, dungeon, just not the starting room. That's the worst place for them to be uh, to be situated in. They're going to be somewhere in the dungeon, uh, and that's going to be randomized, of course. That's one thing, and of course if you click them, they should restore your sanity. Then what I want to do, of course I want to make it so that you can go get to another, to the next level, to the next floor and everything. But before that, I want to improve, still I want to improve the looks of these rooms. Because I think they look, they look decent, but they look too clean. Like there are some uh, bugs of course now, and look, the bugs look a little bit better now. I changed the colors of course, I'm not done. I don't think anyone's gonna notice that the bugs have different colors, but they have different colors now. And it needs to be a little bit dirtier, so I'm thinking of ways of how to add like a little bit of dirt and stuff to these places. Or like, yeah, it's so like dirt and things, there's like nothing on the floors, it's too pedantically clean. So I'm going to add like small vases and like dust piles and bone piles. And stuff like that. But to, in order to do that, I of course figured out that I need a new system. <laughs> and other one of my million systems. A system which figures out where to put these things. Because we can't put small bases and stuff 
where you walk, so it needs to be next to... Oh, excuse me. Next to, like, walls and stuff. Here's the perfect place to put small bases, small bones and stuff like that, so they're not interfering with the walking. Also, there's a bug, by the way, you can walk through. Uh, this is probably not how <laughs> this corner should work. Instead, how this corner should work is probably that you have to walk here and then there. You can't walk straight through here because then you're just walking through this pillar. Doesn't look, doesn't look good. So that's the system I'm going to implement, hopefully, next time. A system which... The, there is already a system, by the way. For instance, there's like... On these... Uh, shelves here. The system places urns, and it randomly places urns here. But the thing is that I need to, for every prop, as I call them, for every shelf, I need to specify what other things can spawn in it and where they can spawn. Instead, what I want to do is that I just designate an area, as for instance, I could designate that this area next to the wall, so all areas next to all walls, and for instance, all shelves and everything, these areas uh, is going to be sent to another function and that function can then populate these areas So that means that I can all all I need to do when I introduce a new prop like a shelf or Whatever this thing is this whole down here is that I can just say oh these areas are available for this system to place small things in Let's up to decorate a little bit uh, So yeah, that's going to be the Thing we're gonna do next time Hopefully, maybe, do, or see. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and see you soon. Also, by the way, soon there's gonna be Magic. Two days, I think, until Kalheim. So uh, maybe we'll see you also in Magic Land. Hello, Daniel! And you are? It's -a me, the YouTube algorithm. And... What are you doing here? I'm just here to take all of the views! No, the, those are my views! Oh, I can explain to you, senor. You see, you have subs 0% and non-subs 100%. That's why you can take all your views. <laughs> I guess it's time that you uh, check out a little, little thing down there.